Welcome to Working With Your Guides. So I've been channeling since I was 23 years old. And one of the things I am most asked, either by people who know my work or, you know, people in my life who know what I do, people want to know about the process of channeling. And of course, it's different for all of us. But over the years, I've worked with a lot of intuitives. I've worked with a lot of channelers. And I've also had friends and people in my personal life who've shared their intuitive experiences. So in what you're about to watch, I'm sharing some tips, some things to consider, and also an activating channel to help you get in contact with your guides, your intuition, or perhaps even your higher self, which is as powerful a guide as you can find. This is actually a broadcast that I did late last year, and we're bringing it back for those of you who are interested. So I hope you enjoy it. And we're doing it in honor of and in celebration of Initiation 2023, my mystery school, which is always a mystery to me as to what the guides are going to want to teach. So if you enjoy this and you feel called to join us for Initiation, we would love to have you. All the details are below this video, but for now, I hope you enjoy deepening your work with your guides. Hello, welcome everyone to this broadcast, which is uh, pretty mind blowing to me that 22,000 of you have signed up from all over the world to take part in this. So it's my honor and privilege to be doing this. And I'll be honest, it's also kind of blows my mind because if I go back 18 years, to 2004 when I began this work. I don't know if I even believed that 22,000 people were interested in channeling back then. It certainly seemed like a much more niche experience and a niche act. I'm a big advocate for channeling can hugely help your life. And for me personally, it massively shifted my personal growth journey I'll tell you a little bit more about my story in a minute, but the reason I wanted to do this free broadcast was to celebrate the release of my latest channeled book. This just came out a couple of weeks ago, Conversations with the Z's, the Z's are my guides. I'll explain how they got that name. And it's book one, The Energetics of the New Human Soul. And it's a whole series. So. This broadcast for me is to both celebrate the book that we've just done and also I'm about to do Initiation, which is our second channeled mystery school. The last one that we did was last November. And so on October 26th, I will again be doing across four weeks, four live 90 minute channeled transmissions from my guides. And I'll be backing that up with videos in between to help those who participate integrate the material. So it's a little bit of a channeling celebration moment for me in my work and the team that I work with. Some of you will probably know me from the energy update. If you aren't that familiar with my work, you may have received my energy updates on a monthly basis. They're the free videos that I put out at the beginning of the month. I've been doing those now for over a decade. And what they really are is my interpretation of channel themes that I receive from my guides. So they will give me a headline. And then when I'm on camera explaining what these themes are, I'm doing to the best of my ability, the job of trying to ground and make sense of what can sometimes be slightly more esoteric or abstract themes. So if you've only experienced my energy updates before, which I know many of you will have, that comes through my channeling. Perhaps you're here because of something else I do, the music. Uh, funnily enough, they say that they got me through music a year before they got me with their voice. They made contact with me through sending music my way. And then of course, there's the Impact the World podcast where I speak to creatives, uh, healers, entrepreneurs who are bringing their work to the world. And that's all about the journey that we go through. I will say that channeling has been one of the greatest change journeys of my life. I'm not going to lie to you. One of the biggest gifts it gave me 
as someone who was very much trained to be a people pleaser. And in my family uh, imprint, there was a lot of worry about what the neighbors think. Uh, you can imagine how, how channeling really helped my ego take a very healthy battering when it came to trying to keep myself protected from other people thinking weird stuff about me. So being a public channeler has been a huge part of my life growth and my journey. But before we dive in today, I wanted to illustrate to you how I use it in my personal life. It's something that, you know, I'm not very often asked to speak about. And so I thought the best way I could do that for you is to share with you the few sentences that I channeled for myself this morning. I will go through periods of my life where I might not channel for myself for a few weeks at a time. And then at other periods of my life, I might sit down and write a message to myself twice a week. Just depends what's going on. But I want to read you what they gave me, my guides, a few hours ago. And by the way, I always write down my channeled messages. It doesn't mean that during the day I can't tune in on them and have a quick dialogue. I do that regularly. But the reason I like to write them down is because then I can go back and look at what was said. And I have it there. But they've also said that the power of writing down your messages from your guides, your messages from your higher self, your messages from your soul, is that we're actualizing through our body spirit information, spirit messages, and we're making them real. So whether you're writing with a pen on paper or whether you're typing, it's a way of bringing it down through the body and making it three-dimensional, this information, but also the second part of it is that you then look back at it and it changes you. It gives you an opportunity to be a listener and also reflect on the message that came through. However, when I'm in my visionary mind or I'm just tuning in with them on something, let's say something odd happens in the afternoon or I'm with someone and I'm like, oh, it's a bit odd. I'm just going to go up and I'm going to kind of see what their broader perspective is. They will give me a message that in that moment will be helpful. But if I want to remember it, I'm going to have to write it down. So I actually use my iPhone a lot uh, for my channeled messages and my notes. I use the notepad in iPhone. So any of you who are familiar with that, it's just a very simple app inside my phone. And I tend to, most of the time, I just write the date at the top. And then I will let the message come through. Other times, I may have a direct question. But today, my question was about this. Uh, I knew that a lot of you were coming, so I wanted to just see if there was anything I needed to know. And this is what they told me. They're talking about you here, by the way. They are here to experience connection. And yes, they are all different, and some are very experienced in their connection abilities but they want to be here for the messages from us and the group connection and frequency that will be created. Some are here just to feel uplifted and a connection to light and spirit. Others range from curious but hesitant to channel through to ready and willing to connect. Your job, as always, is to be present, organize the information, be in your heart, and surrender to the experience as it, the group, and we lead you. Enjoy it, Lee. Well, there was my directive. And you know, things like that are helpful for me. Um, there is a level of unknown to my work, and I think there's a level of unknown to our life. You know, if we're really present in life, we don't really know what's going to happen next. So I'll often, especially for important things like this, where there are many of you gathered and I want to, to the best of my ability, uh, be of the most use, it's important for me to just get those little broader perspectives from them. And it's interesting that they give me a map of where you're all at. It doesn't surprise me because I always expect in a large group, everybody's going to be different. And I've worked with groups for years in the room, online, but it's interesting for me to just get a little sense of who you are. 
It helps me to land in my body more and be more present. It takes away some of the unknown of today that might have gotten my way or hindered what I was going to experience. So that was just my channeled message for myself this morning. On another day, I might be asking, how is my sister doing? What's going on? There's something there and I can't put my finger on it, but I, I wanna see if I can help. And some information will come to me about that or any other area of my life. So before we go into the actual process of channeling, I just want to touch base with you on why would we channel? Why would we connect with our guide team, connect with our higher self, connect with our soul? Now, you'll notice I'm speaking about three different points of connection. So our guide team, now I connect to a group who are my guides, they're called the Z's. But I also firmly believe that if I hadn't met the Z's, my guides, I would be just as happy channeling the voice of my higher self because they're connected to that. They're part of that. You can also say, I want to connect with the voice of my soul. So we as humans have all been conditioned or programmed to believe certain things, to behave certain ways. And there's a lot of beauty in who we are. And there are extraordinary things that we get to experience because of being human. But as my guides will often say, there are also many limiting beliefs that we have been given, that we have been trained into. They say that we are here to unleash more of our soul self into the world, not just individually, but as a collective. But it starts with us. So especially I think in times where it feels overwhelming what you're going through in life or the outside world, like it has been lately, feels in incredibly intense or challenging. The one thing we can influence and bring change to is this and to start with this. So for me, the channeled messages that I go to, I do it to reset myself. I do it to bring balance to myself. I do it because I notice that I'm a little off or I'm a little emotional or I'm feeling out of balance. I also do it because it's incredibly helpful. So why you might channel from my perspective is to expand your life, to expand your understanding, to give yourself a wider view. The one thing that channeling for this past 24 years has done for me is it has, it has really rewired the way I see the world. It doesn't save me from my own human growth path or my wounds or any of the stuff that I come up against like we all come up against things in life. Life is life and it's gonna keep rolling things our way. But it has massively changed the way I deal with things. And it has also really helped me find my center in a way that I didn't used to be able to. So the reason I channel is just a few of those. And obviously I've also ended up doing it for work, which even if I stop doing the channeling publicly for work, I will never ever uh, stop doing it in my personal life. That's a primary relationship for me. And it's a private relationship. Okay, I just shared something with you, which is unusual, but, it, but that's to illustrate my point as to how simply I use it. I'm not always asking massive questions about the universe. In fact, the more I did that, the more I realized that what's beyond us is an extraordinary rabbit hole of more questions and more answers. And what I'm personally really interested in is how does this help me show up in my life in a more present way, in a way that can be more loving, in a way that can be more open, in a way that can be more compassionate? And how does it help me deal with things that I'm going through or help people in my life deal with things that I'm going through? Now that's my why. Your why might be completely different to that. You might not be interested in any of that, but you might say, well, I wanna to talk to my guides or my soul or my higher self because I wanna kind of understand this universe a bit more. We're all very different and I've met many channelers over the years and we're all very different people. We channel in a very different way. We have different connections. But if I was starting today and I didn't have contact with my guides and perhaps I look at some other people out there and I go, oh, well, 
you know, Wendy Kennedy's channeling the Pleiadians, and I, I don't know how to talk to the Pleiadians, and Esther Hicks is channeling Abraham, and I, I don't know. I wouldn't even worry about that, and, and I certainly wouldn't worry about trying to imitate someone else. I would simply recognize something I believe as a fundamental truth. We are spirit. We're born of spirit. We are spirit right now. It's just that the way that many of us were trained as human beings, we were asked to forget. We were asked to shut down from it. We were asked not to see it. In some cases, we had sometimes oppressive religion. And I don't want to say all religion is oppressive because I have friends who love their religion and it, they use it to enhance their life and their faith. But there are some religions that we know, and we know they're out there, have oppressed our connection to spirit. They've, they've said how we can connect to God or spirit and when. And it's just not my belief that someone else should be controlling our connection to spirit in that way or giving us the rules. If you look at our planet and you look at nature and you look at the animal kingdom and you look at us as humans, it's pretty extraordinary. Sure, it's not all good and certainly there are shadows and things that we can look at and talk about and get worried about, but the spirit of life is extraordinary. And if you've ever been with a dead body, you will know how extraordinary that revelation is. When the dead body is no longer animated by the soul or the spirit, they almost look like a different person. It's very odd when you've had that experience of seeing the life force leave somebody. Sure, the body might be the body that your friend or loved one or the person that you're looking at, you recognize that body, but it doesn't even look the same because the soul is no longer in there. So the life force right now that's moving through me, that's coming to you through my microphone, through the camera, through the energy that's moving through me, and the life force in you right now that's tuning in on this, that's listening to this, perhaps that's distracted, perhaps there's something going on in another room in your house and you're kind of half listening to me and half tracking that. It's extraordinary that you have the choice to focus like that where you want and that your senses and your mind and your heart are pulling you in all these directions. So enough about how extraordinary spirit is and us as spiritual beings is. Why to channel and why in these times? I think that's a really obvious question. I think more and more people are feeling uncertain and unstable in the world that we live in as we know it. And so the potential opportunity here and especially because consciousness is rising on the planet, it's something the Z's talk about all the time. These are really good times to have a connection, a faith, a practice, and maybe there are nine things that you use. I've always said, use channeling as part of a balanced diet. Do not make channeling your master. Do not make channeling the only thing you do. It's best when used as part of a balanced diet. And I'm gonna give you a PDF, those of you that are on this broadcast, I'm going to walk you through a checklist before this is all over. And I'll go through a few of those things. Um, and I'm also going to channel disease at the end. But for now, I'm going to move to give you a very quick story about what happened to me with channeling. Some of you who've been with me for many years, you know this story, but I'll, I'll keep it brief. So I was somebody who, like many of us who are sensitive or who have a developed intuition that we haven't yet understood. I had turned that into some quite destructive behaviors in my teenage years. Um, you know, for me, it was overeating and it was, I mean, I was taken to Weight Watchers age 10 and then I was in and out of diet clinics all through my teens. I was secretly eating sugar. Um, so, you know, my mother couldn't quite understand why these diets weren't working because I would go away and privately binge. And of course, there are different ways any of us try and cope. Uh, that was mine in my teenage years. And of course, it didn't work. It gave me temporary relief in the moment. But then, of course, it's accompanied by guilt and weight gain and all kinds of issues. So I went through all of this and it meant that by the time I got to my late teens, 
when I had also identified, oh, I'm not heterosexual and that's going to be a problem in this world. I was like a perfect storm for healing. I was, I was ready and, and, and I remember it was a year when I was 17 and I, I really went through one of the darkest periods of my life, one of the two darkest periods, and I didn't know if I wanted to carry on living. I really seriously considered ending my life. And I don't think I would have gone through with it, but I was really in that place where my back was against the wall and I couldn't find my way out. Now, those are just my details. That's what happened to me. That feels a very long time ago to me now, I'm grateful to say. But for many of us, it's often a healing crisis or a dark night of the soul that propels us into healing. And that's what I did. I found metaphysics, I loved tarot readers, I would go for tarot readings and something would feel real to me about it. It was an energy in the room that I'd never felt before. So gradually I started to reclaim my intuition. I would play with tarot cards with friends and I didn't know anything about what the cards meant. I still don't and I still enjoy tarot readings. I have a very good friend who's a wonderful tarot reader and I still like to go to her a couple times a year because I enjoy being on the receiving end of spiritual information as well as being the deliverer for others. But I had this intuition that was coming online and I was beginning to find the right people, the right classes, the right books that could help me explore it. So flash forward six years. I've gone through all kinds of personal growth. I've gone to shamanic workshops. I've read loads of books. I've done all this stuff. I'd heard about channeling, but I was, you know, a little skeptical. It wasn't that I was skeptical that people could do it. It just wasn't my favorite. I much preferred a tarot reader or uh, someone who was great at leading personal growth um, seminars. That was my jam. The channeling thing felt a bit weird to me, if I'm honest. I was taken to see a channeler. Uh, and I remember he kept his eyes closed the whole time and put on a slightly funny voice. And when I left, I remember saying to my friend who had very sweetly taken me, I said, well, it was really good information, but why did he have to like close his eyes and put on a weird voice? And why couldn't he have just said that to me? I didn't understand. Like I, I, some part of me clearly thought he was performing a trick. So I have a lot of patience now when people think that of me. I'm like, I get it. I understand. It's okay. I'm not going to necessarily go for dinner with them, particularly if they're not combat, if they're combative, but I get it, you know? So I'm minding my own business about a year after seeing that channeler and I'm going to my job uh, in fundraising at the time. I was fundraising for Greenpeace and I was really trying to get my music career going and get into the music industry. Sifting through all these problems in my head that I had that morning, you know, and at the age of 23, there's a lot going on. As we all know, we've all been there and it's a very tricky, delicate transition from the teenage years into early adulthood. So I had lots of judgments and doubt thoughts and negative thoughts uh, toward myself. I could be much lighter and brighter towards others. But towards myself, I still had this highly critical, highly, uh, very hard uh, view of myself and a lot of self blame around what was going wrong in my life. And I had some unhealthy relationships going on at the time too. So anyway, a bit of a perfect storm, but lo and behold, that morning in, on the London Underground, the subway train, I'm having this thought about this relationship I was in at the time and why he was wrong and I was right. Uh, and they basically said, uh, yeah, that's a very interesting thought, but you're wrong. This voice from up here. So it was one of my rare moments of not just attacking myself, but blaming someone else or believing I was right and they were wrong because I was wounded about what happened. That's a very interesting thought, but you're wrong. Clear as day, above the left-hand side of my head. By the way, we're all different. That's how I position them. That's how they position to me. Still to this day, that's, if I'm talking to them, they're here. But we're all different. Some people, it's more abstract than that. The positions move. At first, I thought, is this multiple personality disorder? Or at the time, it was known as schizophrenia. So I thought, is that what this is? Because this voice is so clear. And it kept talking to me. I would kind of be you know, having these conversations and I'd hear these answers. But I knew enough to ask the question, are you my guide? And what I heard was, we are your guides. 
and we've been with you since childhood, but you haven't heard us since you were six. And I was like, well, I don't remember hearing you before I was six either, but anyway. Um, and basically they explained that we're a group of 88 beings and we are connected to source. Some of us have been connected to you. Now, bear in mind, I didn't learn all of this in that moment. I would go home and write all of these questions and write down the answers. So over a period of weeks when I realized, okay, well, if this is multiple personality disorder, it's really helpful because they know things about my life, <laughs> people in my life. They give me information that not only makes sense. So for example, they would say, your sister's in a really tough spot right now. You need to look out for her. And I'd be thinking, huh? And then I'd see my sister the next day and I'd notice something in her that I maybe wouldn't have put my finger on before or I would have dismissed. But because they would make me aware of certain things, particularly back at the beginning, a lot of what they were doing was bringing my awareness to things that I perhaps hadn't allowed myself to fully trust. So this went on for me for months. And after a period of time, I started giving messages to friends and I would end up doing my day job and then coming home from my day job and being on the phone with people for hours. Uh, usually a couple of friends a night, 60 to 90 minutes, kind of in the role of counselor. Not necessarily the most healthy role to stay in all your life. And I definitely at a certain point had to look at that in myself and I had to recognize, okay, well, I clearly have a natural ability here, but I don't want to fix myself in that role in all my relationships, particularly not some of the ones that seem to only want me for that role. That's not going to be very healthy and balanced. That came later. But the reason I share that with you is probably many of you watching or listening to this, you probably are the camp counselor for people. You probably are the one who might be the person that people confide in. Perhaps you know more secrets of your family and friends than you perhaps even want to. And of course, the way you change that role that you're in or, or recreate that role so that it's less overwhelming for you or burdensome for you is up to you. But there's a truth in that role that you're holding. They feel with you there is a space that they can connect into or lean into. Or you're very good at intuitive messages. Who knows? Because we're all different. I know some intuitives who they're really good with intuitive information. They're not really wanting to hold space for people. And then on the flip side, there are those healers who are amazing at holding space, but don't necessarily get messages for others. And then there are all other shades in between. So basically, the reason I'm sharing this with many of you is your relationship with your guides can be completely personal and just for you. For me, having a private access to my higher self, to my soul, it brought back a balance that was missing in all my relationships. And sure, it took time because I was definitely in some enmeshed relationships and some not very healthy dynamics. I was like we all are. I was working some things through my system by playing it out in the world with other people. But what they kept doing for me, my guides, was bringing me back to who I am, who I am, how am I seeing things. And a spiritual connection would always come over me. So I shared with you earlier that they would say things like, oh, look out for your sister right now. Two things would happen for me when they would give me information that felt true. Firstly, my mind would go, oh, I hadn't seen it like that. So my mind would expand. But more importantly, my energy field and my body would expand. So on that first day on the subway, you know, I'm kind of like, sure, I'm right about something. And, and them telling me what they told me, I didn't, I felt safe. They felt like home. I didn't feel judged. They weren't trying to shame me, but they were gently just going, uh-uh, no, no, there's something bigger here. Do you want to see it? And in giving me that invitation, once my mind saw it, my energy field, which if you could represent it physically, was probably a bit like this that day, kind of started to go like this. Ah. And everything started to open out. And I felt this sense of lightness and relief that I had not felt 
when I was just in my human stuff. Because at the time I didn't have a connection practice. I didn't have a place or a space I would go to. Some people have it through yoga or some other practice that really works for them, really lights them up. Maybe for you it's dancing, maybe for you it's singing, maybe for you it's being in a group of sports people all on a team sport. Whatever that is, there are other levels. And for those of you who are here for the direct communication, that's what we're going to look at today. So we're going to focus very much on the writing and the verbal side of channeling. It's not that there aren't wonderful ways to channel. I mean, I've mentioned I channel music, uh, but that isn't what we're here for today. I really want to give you an opportunity to have direct communication with the voice of your higher self, your soul, or your guides. We'll see which one you end up connecting with. Some of you will meet your guides. Some of you already do, and as the Z's said, you're just here because you felt like being in the energy of this. I will tell you one other thing. Crystals. So I was probably a crystal, well, no, I definitely was. Even though I was open to certain things in my early 20s, crystals were something that I just didn't get. You know, I saw all these crystal shops, and I saw lots of you know, my friends who were also hippie, like I was, we were often called hippies by our non-hippie friends. Um, I saw them into crystals and I thought, oh, okay, I don't really get that. The minute I started channeling, I was absolutely drawn to crystals. It didn't make any sense, but it just happened. And they explained to me that they are operating with a crystalline energy field. And so crystals are an incredible earthbound support source that we can connect to that can help amplify our energy or ground our energy. So again, sharing some personal stuff here. This is my first ever crystal that I bought. And I bought this about three or four months after I began channeling. It's a Labradorite. And I got this in Ravenna in Italy when I was visiting a sweet friend who lived there. And this I have held through, I don't know, my first 5,000 private sessions and all of the group work I did for the first decade. Now I, I have a whole load of crystals. So I pick and choose depending on what frequency I need. And there are times I've channeled without crystals too. But most of the time I like to have this in my hand. It's a grounding connection for me when I channel. So crystals are one of my tools. And when we come to the channeling checklist in some minutes from now, we're going to talk about possible tools that you can use to enhance your practice. Um, so, a couple of other things I'm going to say before we go to the checklist and you get to try this yourself. Is it journaling or channeling and does it matter? Is it journaling or channeling and does it matter? I don't think it matters. If you have been journaling for years, and I've met this, I did private sessions for 15 years until 2019. I saw a lot of people from around the world. And a lot of people would come to me for channeling help or to learn to channel. And occasionally we'd start doing it and the person would go, oh, I think I've been channeling for years. I just thought I was journaling. Well, it doesn't really matter whether you see it as journaling or channeling or I, I recently, just in the last three years, I heard about morning pages through Julia Cameron and The Artist's Way, which of course has been out there for a long time, but it, it wasn't something that came onto my radar until a few, a few years ago. And I think that act of going through the morning pages where you let words fall onto the page in the morning, it, it slanted a little more towards creativity. But creativity and spirituality are that far apart. They are intertwined. So, you know, as someone who is both, I've lived a spiritual life and I've lived a very creative life, they are the same energy force. So you may have been already channeling, but one thing that I would like to clarify to you, the biggest objection I've ever heard about channeling and about people who are beginning to channel People love to say this to me, especially after they've done it or even before. How do I know I'm not making this up? How do I know I'm not making this up? And my answer is the same every time. You are. Now, 
if you interpret what I just said one way, you could go, oh, you're making it up. You mean you're faking the information? No, I mean, as a human being, if I channel for myself or if I channel for a group, I am involved. I'm not struck by lightning and knocked unconscious and something comes through me that's holier than thou. I'm a human being, but I'm also a spiritual being, just like you are. So I am co-creative in the act of channeling. Now, to do my job correctly, I have to surrender my mind and my vocabulary in a way that I don't in any other area of my life. Mm, that's not true. Maybe when I'm exercising, being vigorous or creative, there's a certain release that you have to do over that hold. Uh, but I'm certainly not going to get any of my admin or organization done when I'm channeling. My channeling might give me a, a good map for that, but that's a very different part of the brain. But my point is, you are making it up because you're making it happen. The Z's haven't taken my body hostage and decided to send these messages out around the world this past 18 years. I've agreed. And we have an agreement that the day I want to stop doing it publicly, I will. And many times along the way, I seriously thought I was going to stop and I didn't. But my point to you is you are making it up in that you are allowing it to happen. It is not pure, unfiltered spirit when we connect to our guides or to our soul. It is us doing our best ability to translate and bring through as clean and as pure a message as we can. And there'll be some days where you can't do it very well. You know, you've got a lot of emotion going on or there's just strange circumstances in your life and you shouldn't beat yourself up for that. That isn't the day that you're supposed to go to the penthouse. You're supposed to be on floors one, two and three of your life that day. That's where your attention needs to be. But the more we practice this, the more we can take five minutes in the middle of the day to go, I just need to zoom up to the penthouse and have a good look at everything that's going on and feel slightly removed from everything on the ground so that I can come back down and have more appreciation of what's going on in the ground or find a different way to navigate the streets. Who knows? So is it journaling or channeling? Does it matter? Are you making it up? part of you, yes. So let that negative voice or perception just sit aside because you're involved and trying to claim or assume that you are immune from being involved is, is just not possible. Even those people who we know through history were trance channelers. It wasn't that it happened to them without a certain level of organization or preparation. Usually they would all agree, okay, Jane Roberts is going to channel now. Jane Roberts, very famous for channeling Seth. And there are going to be either her husband or a group of people who are around her ready to take notes and she's going to lie down. So you are always involved on some level. So, okay. Um, now we're going to go to you doing some channeling for yourself. Um, so if you have a pen and paper handy, this is a great time to grab it. Or you may just want to pull up, if you're watching on computer, pull up a, a document and you can type. Um, or if, like me, you can use your iPhone and uh, you can just do a few notes in there. So here's a great question to ask if you don't have a question. Like I said, at this point, I often just put the date because for me, it's a message for that day. And then if I want to go, hang on a second, what did they say three weeks ago about what was going to happen on my trip to England? I want to go back and, oh, oh, wow. And then I read it on the trip to England and I'm like, wow, they forecast this. I did not see that and it didn't quite make sense at the time, but now I'm in England on the trip. I can see how that message helped prepare me for what's happening now. So I just put the date, but for you, especially at the beginning, my favorite line to give people is, what does my soul want to tell me today? What does my soul want to tell me today? And the reason I use the word soul is then you don't start worrying about whether or not you're actually connecting with your guides or some other beings. You're basically just asking to go a little above and outside your body and your normal point of focus. You're asking for something bigger to come in. And by all means, change that sentence. 
you know, we're in charge of what we need. So you may have a different sentence. It might be, what does my higher self want to tell me today? What do my guides want to tell me today? What do I most need to know? Whatever works for you, but if in doubt, what does my soul want to tell me today? So write that at the top of your paper or the top of your document and we're just going to take about two minutes in silence for you to write for yourself. So what does my soul want to tell me today? And just start writing and try not to think about it too much. Just let the words flow onto the page or the screen and equally don't stress if nothing's coming. You might just get a few words, you might get lots of sentences. Just see what happens. See this as just a fun experiment with no pressure. We'll take about another 30 seconds. Okay, so if you had chance to reflect on what you wrote, I'm curious how it made you feel. And if not, you can just take a minute now to read what you wrote and take it in. And again, if your mind was distracted or you're feeling a bit frustrated, right? Like, oh, I couldn't, I didn't write anything or I wrote three words. Don't worry about it. There are different conditions that support us in channeling and I'm going to take you through a few of those in a moment um, and you can always try again. But what I'm going to share with you now is my experience of leading this in rooms because obviously I can intuitively feel you all. That's how I do my work on camera when I'm teaching intuitively but I can't see you and I can't hear from you right now. But when I've done this in rooms of people, a couple of things have happened. When I announce that this is what we're going to do, you know, and this is true of the smaller rooms that I used to do this in with 30 to 50 people and then 300, 500 people, there's like a horror that goes through some people's minds. Um, because many of them maybe thought they were there just for me to do the channeling or, or whatever it is. You see some people go, oh, I didn't know I was going to have to channel, uh oh. And it's interesting because they're often the people who have some of the most powerful experiences. I have never yet been in a room, I'm just trying to think if there was ever a time. I think once uh, one, one woman that was in a room said she couldn't write anything but she actually felt very peaceful and so she just interpreted that as enough. But I've never known people not be able to do this in a way that surprises them because I think many people think they won't be able to. 
And I'm a firm believer in all of us can. We just need to be able to set our intention to do it, put some energy around doing it, create an environment both outside and inside our own mind that will allow it to happen. So one of the things that I have most noticed with people who are channeling at the beginning is they're quite overwhelmed or emotional by, with, with what comes through. And the Z's explained this many years ago in a, in a way that helped me understand what was going on. I had one client, brilliant businesswoman, and really fun, super, super smart person. She came to me for help with her business, but also some of her personal relationships. And one thing that was coming up for her was she was a little defended in her emotional relationships. It was a pattern that kept repeating, and it was something she really wanted to crack. And it was something that stemmed from childhood for her. So when she decided she wanted to channel as part of our work together, I remember setting her the homework that she should channel for herself every other day, at least every other day. And in the same way I just said to you, five minutes, sit down, what does my soul want to tell me today, start writing. When she came back after the first week, I said, well, how did it go? And she went, oh, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't very useful. And I went, okay, so did you manage to do it? And she went, yeah. She said, I did it four days actually in the week and I was able to write stuff. It was, you know, anything from a few lines to a paragraph or sometimes more. And I went, okay. And I said, well, why wasn't it useful? And she went, because they just like told me how nice I was and how much love was in me and you know how you know it was just it just wasn't very practical and I went okay and I said to her I said how often do you speak to yourself in your own mind in such a loving way and she went huh well well I don't so what was happening for her, and this happens for most of us, it happened for me too on some level, but I, I think it's quite common. We have to calibrate to their frequency. And their frequency is, is one of more oneness and love and compassion than we are used to. Doesn't mean they're better than humans. And they always say that. They say it's extraordinary to be human. Even with all the challenges that you guys have to go through, they say it's an extraordinary experience of being embodied spirit. So they don't say that they're superior to us either. We'll get to that in a minute, because that's very important. But there is this initiation that we go through with their energy. And it takes time to get used to letting that come through your body and sit in your mind and rearrange who you are. It opens your heart. It can be emotion inducing. That's why many people cry when they first write these messages and then they read them back it bursts something open in us and the repetition of it over time will just compound it will make us more used to that frequency it doesn't mean we won't lose it from time to time or some days feel like you're regressing but overall what they're actually doing is reminding you of the signature of oneness connectedness compassion that is the truth for them in their realm. And we as humans left that realm and individuated. And we need to individuate to be able to create a consciousness shift here on the planet and also to have the experience we're here to have. That can't be bypassed and nor should it. Even if you are someone who is here to work for the planet or for change and that's your mission, nobody is here without a personal mission too. That's something they've explained to me. So my lovely client, when she understood this, she suddenly relaxed into it and I saw incredible changes in her, not because of me, but because of what she was doing over the weeks. She was spending the time writing these messages and she started to soften and open and a couple years later I heard from her and she was in a good relationship and she just had been able to, I would say, open up some of the defenses around her heart, which we all have at different times for different reasons, so it was wonderful. Now, one thing to really walk you through, I have a little channeling checklist, and it's only four points because I didn't, you know, I knew that we had about an hour or just over today. I didn't want to overwhelm you, but a couple of things that 
I have witnessed that I think are very important having spent 18 years working in this field and you know more than that channeling myself. This is really important and I've seen many many people fall at the first second or third hurdle with channeling because of this. So and this is going to be on a PDF for you by the way if you're watching the broadcast live we'll get that to you afterwards and if you're watching it in the future we'll make sure there's a link for you to download this. So remember your guides are not in charge of you. They are not in charge of you. They are your guides, not controllers who get to run your life. Be mindful of the temptation to give your power away to your guides or discount your own feelings or senses when acting on their information. Now this can often stem from a similar pattern of giving power away in relationships and the societal religious imprint of spirit being separate or superior to us. I've seen some really heartbreaking things happen to people, not, not people that I was working with because I was always very clear about that boundary and myself and my guides from the word go, they made that really clear to me, it's why I was able to trust them. They weren't trying to get control over me or manipulate me and they always said, it's your choice and, and I believe that and I, I know that in my being. But I've seen other people turn to divination or channeling or tarot cards or they let it run their life because they're either so unhappy in their existing life or they're so disconnected from what they need in their life to really thrive that they hand it over to spirit and they start going, well, my guides told me I have to do this. And I would say, well, you look really scared of doing that. So are you going to do, well, they've told me I've got to. And I'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. If you're really scared, you don't do it. If you're a little hesitant or you're nervous, sure, push the envelope a little bit and see if you can walk a bit closer to it and see if that feeling changes. But if you are feeling embodied fear about something your guides have told you to do, mm -mm, that's a deal breaker for me. No. If you are willing to have a relationship with your guides and a relationship with yourself and you recognize it's a two-way street, it's a marriage, sure there's going to be some compromise sometimes. But it should never be at the expense of your own sovereignty or at the expense of your own ability to process or act on what you're being asked to do. So, you know, I've seen this show up a lot with people who've either got abusive relationships in their life, uh, boundary issues, that there can be boundary issues with our guides too. And it's all open to interpretation. It's interesting how with channeled words, you have to really be good at recognizing how you react as well. We'll come to that in a second when we talk about studying our channeling. So my next point on the channeling checklist is only act on spiritual guidance when you feel ready and supported in yourself and your life to do so. Sometimes we aren't ready to make a change that is suggested or to see things a certain way that is suggested to us. The power of channeling lies in the way it asks you to widen your perspective and your senses, but it does not replace grounded reality, and nor should it. So those of us with escapist tendencies, you know, and I had to look at that in myself too, because as a child I was trying to escape. Are we trying to escape earth or are we trying to return home to spirit while on earth? There's a difference. We can escape earth and our body and our life. and try and run off into spirit, but spirit will always, always put you back down on earth. It's why many of us go through very high periods in our life or ascension or awakening periods and then all of a sudden you come back down and sometimes you can think, oh my God, I, I was so much higher and lighter in that three months where I was experiencing this expansion. Yeah, but now you get to put all that into your body and reconfigure it and it might take a few months, but you'll get there. And what you'll actually be doing is lightening this part of you. So third, very important, is your channeling helping your life? Is your channeling helping your life? Super important question to ask and to be honest with yourself about. Is it bringing you balance, well-being, helpful information? In my case and most people I know, yeah. If so, proceed happily. If it isn't, 
or it feels overwhelming, take a break from it. It can sometimes move a lot of energy in and for us and there are periods where you will need to integrate the information. I mean, I've had some people I've known over the years, not known well, but like known them on the periphery. I've seen them leave their body for months at a time and all kinds of chaos is happening in their human life. And they put it down to, well, it's meant to happen because my spirit's telling me that. And there's always going to be a point where human reality will catch up with you. So this is why I'm a big proponent of being the humanity and being spirit at the same time. I like both. I like the, the bridge between the two, the dance between the two. And um, last one, and this is an important one, and again, this is very rare. This happens to a very small number of people from what I've seen, but it's important to check. Do your voices, the channeled voices, the guides, the soul, seem negative or unkind? This happens for some, although it is very rare. It can happen when existing mental imbalances are at work. So if you have a certain chemistry issues that you already know, it's very important to proceed carefully with channeling or anything like this that is you outreaching. Or if you have a trauma history, you know, if you have had a very traumatic life or, and, and that's impacting you, that can sometimes get in the way and interfere with you being able to connect to a higher source, a source that's coming from a place of love and purity. But also, and this is important to check too, it can also be a mirror of repetitive, unhealthy relationship dynamics. So for example, if you're someone who's prone to controlling relationships, is your channeling the liberation of that controlling relationship or is your channeling mirroring that and you know bossing you around or the way you're interpreting the words is that you have to do what you're supposed to do uh, because of what they told you. So if this happens for you, do not continue with channeling but do seek help with therapists, healers and anyone else who is skilled with that kind of occurrence. That's not my wheelhouse, that's not where my work, the area of my work has been, but I know of a few people who've had that come up over the years and they have, through checking with their local community, through finding people who might know of someone who's dealt with this before and, and often a really good therapist who is holistically minded or spiritually minded can be excellent at working with those kinds of dynamics. Okay, so. Before we go to the Z's for a little channeled message, I wanted to give you just a quick template of channeling steps. So if you're preparing yourself for channeling steps, now ITEPS, I-T-E-P-S is what came out of me uh, for this. So we're gonna go through each one, each, each letter in ITEPS stands for something that you can put in place to support your channeling work. So number one, intention. I for intention. So setting an intention for connection influences your experience. So set an energetic intention before channeling. I mean, honestly, set an energetic intention before anything because it will enhance your presence and what you're calling in. But an example could be you sit down to channel and you say, I intend to bring clarity, light and love to myself through this message or to this situation, which I'm asking a question about. Or you may simply say, I open to my higher power, I open to the light. Create your own words, create your own formula. What's an intention that feels true to you that you might use as a repetition each time you're about to channel? So it becomes like a handrail for you and it starts to create a set of circumstances for you that you rely on that help you get in the zone of surrendering your mental mind to allow these higher messages to come through. You can also create the intention by asking a question. So I gave you one earlier, but I've put on the sheet here, what does my soul or my higher self or my guide team want to tell me today? So that's its own kind of intention. The question you ask, the way you set it up. Number two is T for tools. So we have intention. Now we come to tools. Use tools to help you connect. So crystals is one of the tools that I've told you is one of my things, but it can also be movements. You know, you might do five minutes of Qigong or Tai Chi, or you might 
dance around the house to dispel some of the mental or emotional energy that you feel like you're carrying to just kind of empty yourself out. You might put on beautiful music. You know, I often, you know, I love Deva Pramal and Maten and their music. Uh, there are many other artists I will use before I do a channeled event. I will put their music on in the room that I'm in to really start to calibrate the vibration of the room so that it's easier for me to move into that wider vibration for a group. So music is a tool. Uh, certain drinks, you know, I, there was a period for years where I would drink coconut water right before because it has a lot of electrolytes. And uh, water, by the way, is imperative um, when you're channeling. You need to drink more water than you think you do because it moves a lot of energy. So now we come to the third one, which is E for environment. Create the right environment for you to channel in and perhaps for several minutes or more before you begin. So, I mean, I'm a strange example because there's no way I should have been channeling on the tube, you know, the subway. I mean, in my head, I thought, well, surely I should be a raw vegan who's been in silent meditation for three weeks because that was my belief system at the time. I thought channeling was this otherworldly thing that only happened to I won't even say special people, I'll say maybe unusual people. That's how I saw it when I was 23. So the environment's really important. And like I said, some of you earlier, you might have been distracted when you were trying to channel. Maybe when the kids are you know, jumping around in the room next door, it's very hard for you to tune out of them and tune into yourself. So your environment might be a certain park bench that you like to go to where you feel peaceful. Your environment might be a room in your house that you make more peaceful so that you can go and channel. You know, you take out some of the junk that's in there so that it feels more peaceful and you put a candle and a crystal and a nice curtain. You create an environment that's going to be conducive to you bringing these higher frequencies through. And that can also be important right before you channel too. Like I said, I like to set the music and I like to go internal and be quiet for a little while before I start when doing it for people. But if you're at the beginning of this practice, environment is a really good third tool or step to employ. Number four is practice. You know, we get better at anything the more we do it and commit to your practice. I mean, I know that can be annoying if you have a slightly rebellious aspect like I do. Being told to practice is not necessarily always going to be your favorite thing, but you know, this benefits you. This isn't for anyone else. This isn't for performing's sake. This is for you. So commit to your practice. Repeat the act of channeling at a comfortable pace for you, perhaps daily, several days a week, or several times a month. Whatever works for you, and we're all different. You know, some of you might go, I love channeling every day. I sit down every morning and I channel for 10 minutes and I love it. Some others among you might go, mm, I like to do it twice a week because I feel like I live on it for three days. And then I reread it and the, there's more and I feel like that keeps me going. And then others among you might say, I only like to do it every couple of weeks. And that pace might change as you go. But if you're starting this, do practice because the more you do it, the more you get used to it. And now I come to the final point, and this is very important and mustn't be separated from practice. S for study. So we had ITEPS, intention, T for tools, E for environment, P for practice, and then S for study. Study your channeling and your reactions to your channeling so you can develop a considered relationship to it. I'll give you the worst kind of example. I'll go back to what I just said. Oh my God, my guide said I need to do this, so I'm going to do this. Okay, you're going to do it. You look a little anxious to me, so I personally wouldn't advise doing anything from that state, but if you're determined and if that's how you're wired and no one can reason with you, go ahead and do it, but then study the effect. Don't just do channeling like it's an act of doing without engaging with it as an act of observation. So reflect on what you just did. Go, oh, I'm now just going to look back on my channeled messages from the last few weeks and I'm going to look back on how I interpreted them and what I did and I'm going to see that a certain level of chaos went on in my life. 
So am I misinterpreting the messages or am I not connecting to the right source? Study it so you can problem solve it. This is why writing it down is so important. You get to keep these notes and go back and reflect. So intention, tools, environment, practice, study. Take time to zoom out and look at how healthy or helpful this is. Again, it's going to be very rare that you will use your channeling in a destructive way, but I've many times seen people who have anxiety blame their channeling for the anxious actions that they took because of the way they interpreted their channeling. And actually, that's the perfect moment to go, oh, okay, I probably shouldn't be acting on what my channeling says until I'm sure I'm not doing it from a place of anxiety. I need to work on my anxiety with somebody. I need to find a therapist or a healer or a trauma body therapist. So whatever it is. So studying your channeling is really important. Okay. There's so much more I could say, but I didn't want to overwhelm or over, uh, what's the word, make it overly complex today. I know many of you may have already done my audio guide, How to Channel and Why, which is a two hour step by step process. Much of the information I've, I've shared here today, I've also added some new things. And of course, you know, you're always welcome to go and, and get that at leeharrisenergy.com if you want to take a deeper dive. But um, it's interesting, I'm going to channel the Z's now, but I just wanted to give you one perspective. So this book that just came out, Conversations with the Z's, I had a channel book come out in 2019 called Energy Speaks, which was messages that the Z's had given in workshop rooms around the world that we edited into the written form on topics. Well, the reason Conversations with the Z's came about is I know a very wise and spiritually educated psychotherapist who's also a friend, Diana Edwards. And uh, Diana had had some sessions with the Z's just privately within our friendship a few times. And the questions she asked were so fantastic that it brought through a whole other way of receiving and grounding their message. So conversations with the Z's literally is that. It's, and you can get the audible version as well if you want to hear the actual recordings that took place between the Z's and Diana. And then we turn those into these books. The questions you ask are so important with channeling because they're everything and they influence everything. So keep asking questions. Like if you've got a big deal or a big issue in your life and you ask questions about it on Monday and you come away from it, you go, oh wow, that, that really helped. And maybe you also go, that really helped, but that second sentence is a bit confusing to me. Uh, I'm not sure. Ask another question on another day. Keep asking them more questions. Keep getting more clarity, more clarification. The one thing the Z's have explained to me is that they can only bring through information that we're ready for and that we're available to use. And that's how it works for me. And it's the same when I do my public work they can only bring things into the energy field of the public work that the group who are receiving the message are somewhat in control of. That's how they've explained it. So never be afraid to keep asking your questions, but understand that with channeling, it does take a bit of time to refine the types of questions you ask. So for example, if you're like, will I win a hundred thousand pounds ever in my life? That's not the kind of question that they can answer. They'll probably come back with something like, possibly, how they'll ask you an under the hood question. They'll ask your ego why that's important to you. And they'll instead say, rather than waiting to win 100,000 pounds, is it important for you to manifest this money? How does it serve your mission, your purpose, your way of life? Okay, let's look at that. So they're not there for fortune telling. They're there for evolution. And they're there for the evolution of your consciousness and our consciousness. And with that, I will turn it over to the Z's and we'll see what they have to say. Just take me a minute to uh, switch into their gear. And I hope you've been able to keep up with my speed. 
I've gone as fast as I can to impart the information, but I've tried not to go too fast, but I knew I only had you for a certain amount of time today, and I would rather give you too much that you can then go back and sift through than too little. Ha, good, mm, wise souls who are becoming more wise by the day. And we do not mean wisdom in the sense of mm, human knowledge or information. No, we mean the wisdom of uh, the spiritual beings that you are. Mm, you in this group have a very particular purpose. Although there are a few of you here who are not, uh, we will say in that group, you are here for curiosity reasons mm, or for, shall we say, uh, some of you, uh, a very small number of you, you are here to fight what is going on in this broadcast or to fight Lee and Lee's energy. Uh, but again, just a handful of you, and that is your path. We would say to you, fighting is not as interesting as mm, opening to something that will serve you. And the fact that you are still here at this point in the broadcast uh, tells us uh, that you are actually fighting your own connection to spirit uh, through pretending to fight us or Lee. So that's something for you to be aware of. All of you in this group, uh, with the exception of those few that we just mentioned, are here for what we would call spiritual purpose on earth. You are here to reclaim, remember, and re-embody your spiritual selves. Not just for you, even though many of you are undergoing huge healings uh, of your ancestral line, of your early childhood, by opening to spirit. It is taking layers of density and wounding and mm, moments and times in your life where you have had to compress who you are, uh, put yourself into a tight little bundle so that you don't mm, offend or upset others, or to try and manipulate life so that you can get through it unscathed or safely. Many of you have to suppress yourselves quite wisely for long periods in your life. So don't beat yourself up for recognizing that you have been suppressed. Everyone on earth in human form is either undergoing some level of suppression right now or has brought themselves through enormous suppression. The suppression is mm, 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 collective. It is not individual. You're focused on you, perhaps. You're worried about why you can't find your voice or why you won't speak your truth, or perhaps the opposite. You are trying to find a way to speak your truth in a less jagged or mm, 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 attacking way to others. And you are having a spiritual awakening where your defensive outward behavior is beginning to soften and lessen and you are able to re-enter the chamber of your heart in an all new way at an all new level. So we have said this many times in our transmissions over the years with Lee, heart frequency is the currency of the future. Where you are going on this planet, the heart will be everything. Now, some of you may find this laughable uh, because you are so fixated on what you see playing out today in your world in 2022 that heart does not seem that it is mm, there. And yet, of course, that is an illusion because many of you are distressed about some of the things that you are seeing taking place on the planet. Why? Because they do not come from the heart. They come from the human fear template or the human template of war, which is not just about, we will say, war that exists on a planetary level uh, where countries fight each other. It is very individualistic, this energy. So, for example, when you are judging, attacking, criticizing another being, you are in that same energy of war. You are just playing it out on a smaller level. And when you are doing all of that to yourself, you are in the energy of war against yourself. It is not your fault. It is an energy template you were born into, but it is also an energy template that you are ready to let go of. So many of you in this group are here as stewards of the heart and the energy of spirit and consciousness that wants to move into humanity at a deeper level. So uh, some of the most powerful among you in this group 
you do not have what we would call mm, 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 public roles or what you might term a leadership role or a position that affects many, at least so you think. But in fact, you are altering the hearts of those around you on a daily basis simply by being present in yours and holding a broad consciousness. People feel your energy field when they come into your orbit. That is why you like certain people. That is why you are often struck by the one who can hold a broad perspective, the one who can hold a certain level of calm or space when you are around them. You are all intermingling with each other all of the time. Chemistry works because of the way that you fit with each other. So for example, there is a beautiful chemical reaction and sponsorship between someone on the planet who is a go-getter, is someone who is what some of you might call type A, not in a judgmental way, they are simply the type to constantly be doing things and getting things done. And then they can find a beautiful chemical blend with one who is more present to observe and be still and gently and slowly respond. So you are always finding these chemistry matches with each other. You are often sponsoring mm, growth in each other through holding skills or values for the other person in the chemistry mix. Sometimes you are uh, holding it for the world. And so you don't realize that your only job on this planet. It is not to save the planet. It is not to single-handedly raise consciousness. It is to allow yourself to become the fullest soul-based human that you can become. And that energy will emanate from you into all who meet you, even when you are having your, what we will call, crabbiest or most shut down days you will be available to shift the energy in a room just because your energy field has practiced space, heart, presence. That is why you connect with your guides. That is why you work with your guides. Not because your guides are better than you, as Lee quite so rightly said, but simply because we are in a realm that is unencumbered by human gravity. So. From your perspective, we seem very spacious. Now, ha, from our perspective, you look very spacious. Even with uh, the gravity that you have to navigate and some of the restrictions that you have upon you as humans that are not natural to the soul, your lives look spacious to us because of the kaleidoscope of experience that you get to go through in the body. So the chemistry fit between you and your guides is a pertinent one. It is you reconnecting to the bridge of spirit. It is you reconnecting to a part of you that you know is home, but that ever since you were a few years old on this planet, and for some of you later in years, if spirit was encouraged in your childhood, it is a connection you remember, that you were full of, that you were free within, that was available to you. It was a life force that has a magnetic power. That is what many of you are doing right now with your own connection to spirit. You are learning how to once more become magnetic and that is a beautiful thing. And connecting with your guides, connecting with your soul, connecting with your higher self, it opens you out. And when you open out, you become more than your smallest self or your smallest belief about yourself. And in that moment, in that act of opening beyond your smallest aspects, they get to heal. They get to gently burn while you expand yourself. They get to gently release. They see that they are no longer the tight outfit that can hold you in place, for you have remembered your spiritual self and your broadest energy field, and you are now transmitting that not only into your life, but to all others who know, experience, come to be in your presence. And let us be clear, this is not your job. Mm, you are not doing this for others, and if you find yourself thinking you are, stop it. Do it for yourself first, and you will naturally, naturally, 
want to share this energy field. Why? Because your spiritual home is oneness and connection. So you are never miserly. You are never, we will say, withholding when you return to that frequency. That is a human construct based in scarcity, based in competition. Human constructs, not constructs of the soul. So, as these soul imprints of scarcity leave you, and for some of you, as you learn to surrender this part of you that thinks you need to save the world in order for you to be happy to live in it, we will say, save yourself so that you are happy to live in you. And then, the being that you become will be very attractive to others who resonate at that frequency. This is why so many of you go through such shifts in your friendships and personal relationships when you go through big awakenings or life changes. It is not that there's anything wrong with the people that you leave behind, it's just that your resonance shifts. So, that is enough from us today. We are aware uh, many of you are what Lee would call cooked at this point. Ha! So, for energetic reasons, we will bow out. But it has been a pleasure and an honor to get to speak to and with you today. And we wish you all great love and peace in this journey that you are on to bring more love, peace, wholeness, and consciousness to this beautiful planet of yours. Good, in peace and in love to all.